Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars and some of my favourite people. And we've got one for you today. Tom Chambers is the man who seemingly can do everything. I hate him. Tom, how are you? (laughs) That's very kind of you to say that. I wouldn't believe that for a second, though. Can you stop being so smug? It does bother me. I come and see you in a show and there you are. You can do everything. You're dancing, you're acting, you're singing. Sometimes you can be a smart ass. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you are. You always think someone's better than yourself, though. It's only that the, the professional dancers, they just pick it up so quickly. They're, 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 Helen, our choreographer, she shows everyone a step, and they just do it in about 30 seconds, and I'm still doing it three days later, just going, what was that bit? What, well, you know, it's like, it's just like learning computer code. It's very, very, if you're a seasoned professional dancer, it is amazing how quick they just do it. But I've, I've not been dancing all the time, so it just uh, takes a while to warm up get it back into the system it's very interesting I just came to see you uh, a few weeks ago in White Christmas for opening night and it was spectacular I loved it most of all I thought the orchestra was just sensational it's huge isn't it I know it's, you know, it's one of those um, it's one of those ones you look back on and you think I can't believe we had all that you've got 20 people in the orchestra so the sound, I mean, it's just like being at a, at a concert, uh, especially in a place like the Dominion, because it's a 2,000 seater, and it used to be a cinema, I think, so there's not a bad seat in the house, and the, the way it's constructed, those amazing old buildings have such good acoustics and everything, and then they've also got all technical uh, speakers that make it all sound amazing. So to be able to, yeah, dance to uh, a, an amazing orchestra. Irving Berlin, I mean, it's the golden Hollywood era of the, uh, the classic White Christmas. Um, you know Bing Crosby Danny Kay and we are uh, uh, we're, we're doing our best to keep up with them but, it's, but the audiences are, are, are loving that um, if you're looking to get into the Christmas spirit and this doesn't do it then I don't think anything will no absolutely I first saw this show on Broadway about 10 years ago and fell in love with it because it is the epitome of an American Christmas really isn't it it's all lovely and red and of course we get that song 37 times through the show I have to ask though how are you coping with being Mr. Christmas 700 times a week because this show does give you a packed schedule doesn't it Yes, it certainly does. Uh, I, I always feel like I'm training to be an athlete because you um, you suddenly think, well, uh, I can't quite get away with burning the candle at both ends when you've got eight, eight shows to do and um, uh, and you just want to, well, you, you realise that your body starts to uh, to need uh, rest and good food instead of just anything you throw down your throat. Um, but uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a joy to do those, absolutely. We've got 30 in the cast as well, so we've, we've got a good... Good, a good frame, good support of absolutely everyone with mm. the tap shoes and um, and uh, early white teeth. It's amazing your career when you look at it. I mean, I know you as a West End star. I've seen you for many years in things, most recently Top Hat, which was incredible. Um, but most people will know you, of course, probably for Strictly, Holby or uh, Waterloo Road. It's amazing how your career can go in the direction that Showbiz wants to send it. Yeah, you never really know what's going on, what's going to happen next. So it can either be complete fear and you just think, oh, I need to settle down and get a proper job to, to get some stability. Plus, when you've got, you know, young family coming along and I've got two two children now and Olive is only four and a half months. And I'm just always thinking, how am I going to wait the next 25 years when I can when literally 12 months to 12 months, you know, you're tax year to tax year. You don't know whether you're going to break even, go in the black or the red. And um, so it's a it, 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 it game. It's just so unpredictable. I mean, I'm very lucky that things work out you have good years and bad years like like being a farmer really with your with your with your harvest but yes. it's um not that that's a very good analogy but yeah. it is. how are your sprouts this year are they coming on well <laughs> well this year i've had a bumper bumper, <laughs> bumper, bumper ride to the end uh, after a, a, a fairly standard middle I've, I've been lucky that um, I've been doing Father Brown, which is 1950s as well, and that's that's a really it's a G.K. Chesterton stories. Um, so it's again, it's kind of like not a bad bone in the body type of stuff. It's uh, good old fashioned detective work, um, and uh, that's been amazing uh, filming in the sort of props and it's uh, um, glorious. But it is daytime TV, so you either have to be unemployed or retired to see it. But it's it's well worth the watch. So I'm sort of I'm lucky there to be able to bounce from it's very hard to go from TV to theatre without people putting you in a in a box mm. in a pigeonhole so I'm, I'm lucky that Holby was my first ticket into the industry after six years of trying of knocking on doors because um, 
from then that means I was able to um, you know cross cross the line because uh, thanks to Strictly there's no way I would be getting musical theatre jobs if it wasn't for Strictly it's amazing when I see you live I mean you've sort of come from a better generation that triple threat thing doesn't really happen anymore where you see performers with a big personality and the ability to dance and sing and do all of that do you feel you've sort of been blessed with this gift of a different bygone age because there aren't many people like you who stick out I always say this I've been very lucky to see hundreds of shows most of which I walk out of these days because life's too short to sit through a rubbish show that's my new theory um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true though isn't it? Do you, do you feel that you've sort of been given this this great blessing of a, um, a, a certainly an amazing talent, but also of a talent that, that nobody seems to care about anymore, which makes you excel? I know that I was uh, always the class clown at school, uh, and I couldn't really understand uh, why or whether I was necessarily sort of doing it. I wasn't doing it to attract attention, but um, it was just... Um, I don't know what it was. It's just always like there was that kind of like performer person, and it was it was all happened by mistake, genuinely, because it was doing a game of football in morning break, and no one had been up to the school play, and the teacher came over and said, "All of you, I want you all at three o'clock in the gym this afternoon," and we all like to sing rhubarb down a microphone, you know, over and over again to a tune. And I ended up getting the part of Dracula, spectacular in, in Dracula, and then there was this weird moment where on the first time there's a one line that says uh, you either have it or you do not have it and I happen to have it and the audience <laughs> would always they would always fill in the gap if I left the pause just big enough and it was a weird feeling I just thought oh maybe I'm maybe I'm in the right game here maybe this is what I need to do little did I know though it would take 15 years to actually get employed work from it mm. I, I don't know I've, I've always loved uh, I was always inspired by sort of, uh, Gene Kelly in those afternoon films I used stamp on the kitchen floor before I knew what tap dancing was so it's one of those things you don't know where it comes from where your fascination and inspiration comes from I mean, if it had been a football I would have been practicing practicing on the pitch for seven hours day like Beckham did top right hand corner top right hand corner and all that and, <laughs> and you just you don't know how it, how it happens but um, it's a love hate relationship as well because there's so many musicals that um, I just don't seem to fit the bill I'm, I'm, I'm not very good at being I don't think you know the modern hip Sort of person, uh, so it's like I'm I'm part of the Cary Grant, Errol Flynn era uh, in my blood. More, uh, I'm mm. not. Um, I don't think I'm as cool and trendy. You see, so it's it's kind of like I, I seem to fit the old stuff, not the old stuff, but you know the good old stuff. You know what I, mean. I agree. I know exactly what you're saying. And you certainly steal this show with your 11 o'clock numbers. I mean, you do get the big dance numbers. I have two words for you. Alid Jones, how's he doing? Well, I do give him a good ribbing every time he, every time he criticizes my dancing. <laughs> He's in no position, is he? <laughs> I, I remind him that he only, got, he only got to the semi-final on Strictly and not actually the final. So, uh, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I, I do have to say that he sings White Christmas a lot better than I do because uh, I did play this. I played the Bob part in White Christmas, the, uh, the Bing Crosby role in in Sunderland in 2009. I absolutely loved it, but I was always jealous of the bloke Adam Cooper who was dancing the Danny Kay role still, mm. um, doing all the tap dancing. Um, and I dreaded dreaded having to sing White Christmas on my own naked exposed on stage because yeah. it's such a it's such a classic and I think I think um, you're almost on a hide into nothing with that one aren't you really it's very tough uh, you've got to make it your own because if not they're just going to say well it's not as good as the original <laughs> it's not like I think of is it and I think he said something like you know um, a, a parrot would be able to sing this or something you know <laughs> but it's, it's not it's flipping difficult yeah. so Alan is uh, he's, he's a top bloke what I love about him he doesn't have any ego no toys in his tram at least yeah. not he's not shown them yet so um I don't know, another 25 matinees, you might see the old diva strop, you never know. <laughs> they're coming, they're creeping right there, right? Well, I loved it. White Christmas is on at the Dominion Theatre in London's West End. Um, it's a good job you put it on now, really. I don't think it'd work in June. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, August Bang Holiday is a killer. <laughs> <laughs> don't get many people looking for snow and white Christmas songs and... Like not just throw together it's an enormous theatre as well just two questions before you go that feeling when the pin focus hits and you've got all those dancers around you is there anything more thrilling on that enormous stage to have all of that production around you <laughs> uh, you know it's lovely when you get it right I'm always looking for which bits I get wrong 
um, is a bit like being back on Strictly. I very rarely got to a dance without making a mistake, so mm. there, weren't, there weren't that many tens thrown my way. But it was, um, but it is, it is, it is like being part of the uh, the Olympic ceremony. I think that's how I would sort of. Yeah. When I watched the Olympic ceremony, it was such an amazing euphoria moment for the audience and for the people taking part. It kind of, it sort of does feel like that every night. So it, it's moments in time you have to really try and be in the moment and remember them and not keep thinking about what jobs you've got to do the next day or anything like that. Mm. You, you just have to really celebrate it. Congratulations, mate. You're, you're almost sickening to the point. I'm a deeply unattractive man, ginger hair, and the way the ladies was looking at you, it must be fabulous to be you. Uh, it's all the costumes, mate. It's nothing to do with me. If they could see me at home, it'd be a very different story, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, save it for the stage. Congratulations. Tom Chambers is the big star of White Christmas. Good to talk to you, Tom. Thanks a lot. You too. Thanks very much.